Hey everyone, this is Dean with DCA Crypto. Today I'm going to cover what I think is going to happen with October uh, for crypto, the crypto markets. Obviously, I don't have a crystal ball. Just going to give you some projections uh, based off from the history of the crypto cycles with Bitcoin and that. But I've got some things I wanted to cover in this video for you guys. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Please give this video just a quick like to get the YouTube algorithm flowing. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so as you know, uh, I'm actually recording this on the 29th of September, so it's not quite October yet when I'm recording this, but this is going to come out on October 1st. So I wanted to get this video out to you. Already at the end of September, we're seeing some bullish price action on some of these coins. Uh, Tron up 6%, Bitcoin Cash up 11%, uh, Chainlink up 15%. It's been pumping recently. You'll take a look at that one quick here. Some people are asking my videos, what's going on with Chainlink? Well, bullish October I think is what's going on with Chainlink as you can see we're starting to come up here uh, with it so may get another dip on this you know in December January we may not just kind of have to see how that market's going to unfold here uh, if we go to these other cryptos here they're all kind of leveled out but I'm looking at the seven day charts here so these could have pumped more by the time this video comes out 12 and a half percent on maker I'm not too familiar with that project but, uh, you know, Mutable X down 14% for the month of September. So I think we're starting to see some of this uh, red September end and the bullish October begin. But really going to depend on what kind of news we get over the next few days and few weeks. So just keep in mind that we're going to go off from the history of Bitcoin here and its typical monthly return. So October, if we look at this chart here, October currently... Uh, typical returns is 23% for October. November is 46%. Now, that's kind of skewed because of the 2013 uh, pump that Bitcoin had with 400%. So keep that in mind. But in 2020, we had a 43% increase on Bitcoin. Uh, 2019 would have been showing a, a red month for Bitcoin for, Oct for November, minus 17%. And that would have been before the 2020 having so you know we could see a slightly red October if it goes off and that but we'll kind of have to see just what happens in October primarily but as you can see October very very bullish month so we could see some price pumps in this uh, in this month so uh, some people ask me uh, you know wh what about uh, are you taking any profits on anything or not I'm typically not taking any profits on any long-term project of mine. You know, I've got a lot of Solana and I've got a lot of Quant. Uh, I've got a lot of different gaming projects in my portfolio. Unless they pump, you know, like a few hundred percent within a few weeks time, I'm probably not going to take any profits on them just because it's so hard to predict this market. And those are long-term plays for the bull run primarily. And once we get into the bull run, I'll start taking some profits out on those. But for the most part, I'm not going to take out any profits unless, you know, we get a significant increase. You know, if we get, you know, 50 to 100 percent increase, I may or may not take out profits. Just depends on if it's a big spike or not. Uh, if we get a 100 percent increase within a day or so, it's typically a good time to take out some profits on it because it's likely going to have a, a correction and then you could buy back in and potentially acquire more of, of that coin if that's what you're looking to do but that is kind of a risky play so I don't like to do that with my primary my big plays and all I like to do that with my smaller plays so that way if you know we don't get that correction for some reason then I'm not out all those profits that I should have been taking out once it gets higher and higher so just be careful on what you're taking your profits out on uh, I could have done that with Solana when it got up to like $32, but, you know, with the bullish news of, you know, the SEC coming out and saying that the secondary sales on crypto exchanges for XRP were not considered security uh, for them, it, it really pumped Solana a lot. And I could have technically sold my Solana and bought back in around $20, but you just don't know what the market's going to do. So that's a risky play. And Solana's my biggest play. So I didn't want to 
do that and then not get a good correction and potentially, you know, miss out on, you know, trying to buy it back in after it's already pumped. And you're going to have to be careful of that in the bull run because you're going to see some of your coins pump, you know, like 50% or 100%. And then you're going to sell thinking that, you know, it's going to come back down and you're going to be able to buy it back in lower. And that may not happen in the bull run. It may just keep slowly climbing up. So keep that in mind and just be careful what you do. Uh, you, it, it would be a not a bad idea to take out some profits at some point with it, but for the most part, you just don't want to sell everything in your portfolio for that. And I'd like to take a quick moment to thank Femex Exchange for sponsoring this video, guys. Go ahead and check them out. The link is in the description of the video. Uh, they're running a quick promotion I want to show you real quick on here. Uh, so new uh, Femex Soul Pass holders, uh, deposit Carnival. Deposit to win up to 20% USD cash back. This is going until October 9th, so go ahead and check that out. The key points are uh, you can win up to 20% USDT cash back exclusive for new uh, Femex Soul Pass holders, the PSP holders, and the prize pool is 100,000 USDT. So go ahead and check them out. I'll zoom into the uh, QR code here so you guys can check that out and uh, scan it if you need to. I'd like to thank Femex for sponsoring this video, guys. All right, let's jump back into it. So we can take a look at the uh, rainbow chart here, kind of get an idea of what we're, where we're at. Uh, you know, we're down in this lighter blue area here. We've been slowly coming down now. We could get back down to the dark blue area, but I think in October we're gonna pump up some possibly, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that and see what happens. But we could, we could start climbing up towards the end of the year and then towards the halving come back down again or even or even keep pumping to the halving and then come back down. But typically, if we look at the history here, December has been a pretty red month and January has been a pretty red month, about 40% of the time. Uh, so it could go either way in December and January. It just depends on these big Bitcoin ETFs. If they get pushed out until next year, until, you know, like March or so, right before the halving, before they get approved. That would be just perfect because that would give us time to accumulate more of these coins as we get closer to the halving. Uh, and then once that ETF news comes out that Bitcoin ETFs have been approved, it's probably gonna start taking off. Um, but if we look at the rainbow chart here, as you see these Bitcoin halving events in the past, you know, we've had a correction down right after those halvings. So we could come up here, you know, into the top of the light blue or even in the green area. And then we might come back down a little bit before we take off into the into the bull run. But the Bitcoin ETFs being approved and anything else that could happen uh, could really push us into an early bull market possibly, but I'm not necessarily expecting that. What I'm expecting is when they get approved, we're gonna see some uh, spikes in the price and then eventually come back down before we take off to the bull run. But my expectation is these ETFs definitely get approved before the uh, halving because I think they only have until March at the latest or somewhere around there to make a final decision and they can keep pushing it out the decision up until that point but at some point I think it's in March is the last time they can push it out they can't push it out anymore at that point they have to make a decision by then so my expectation especially with Gary Gensler coming out and saying openly because you know they've some of that I think the previous SEC chair has come out and said that he didn't think Bitcoin was considered a security that he thought it was a commodity uh, but Gary Gensler I don't think himself has actually come out publicly uh, after he's been in the SEC chair position and actually said Bitcoin is not a security until just the other day so that is uh, a good sign that these ETFs are eventually going to get approved. I don't think they can really deny them in BlackRock. I think they've had like 300 and some ETFs and only one of them out of all those has been uh, denied ever. So it's more than likely going to get approved and hopefully it won't get approved for just BlackRock. Hopefully it'll get approved for Grayscale and a bunch of others that have applied for it as well and not just BlackRock. Cause, but the thing is, is whoever gets approved first is the one that's going to get the most of it so hopefully they get all all get approved at the same time that would be ideal and very bullish for crypto um, but as far as what we're going to do in october we'll just kind of play it by ear 
if you get some of your projects uh, that are smaller plays and they start pumping really hard, you know, and it's not something that you cared necessarily to hold the entire for the time for the bull run, it might not be a good idea. To, uh, may not be a bad idea to take out some profits on it if that's the case, but uh, right now I'm just planning on holding uh, my my coins until the actual bull run, and I'm staking uh, some of them as well, and just keep holding on to those so they can grow until the bull run. I'm not worrying too much about profits, but I do have some short-term strategies as well. I talk about those mostly in my Discord, my group there, um, but. That's pretty much what I wanted to cover for this video, guys. Just keep an eye for October. It's it's uh, Moontober, so we'll have to see what happens uh, by the end of the month. It'll be really interesting to see how this month plays out in crypto. But I appreciate all of you watching my channel, and we'll see you on the next one.